bass voices are a very common part of many large modular patches. Creating a simple bass line is a great starting point for learning the fundamental elements of patching. In this video we'll take it step by step, starting by building the voice itself, then sequencing it from a MIDI keyboard. Synth voices always start with an oscillator. Let's listen to a saw wave from the MCO by patching it straight to our output mixer. This is the fundamental tone that we'll modify to create our final bass sound. By turning the large frequency control, we can set the starting pitch of the oscillator. We can use the small knob to fine tune the frequency. We can control the pitch of the oscillator with a keyboard or sequencer using the volt per octave input. Let's connect our MIDI keyboard, patching from the volt per octave output of our MIDI to CV converter. Let's lower the starting frequency since we are making a bass voice. Playing the keyboard now changes the note that the MCO is playing. Let's re-patch and listen to the sub-output, which produces a square wave that is one octave lower than the main output. This output is especially useful in bass patches. Although we are now generating a pitched tone, we have no control over its brightness or volume. So let's move on to our next module. Filters typically follow the oscillator in a subtractive synth voice. Let's patch the MCO into the input of the MCF times two and connect the low pass filter output to our mixer. If we lower the cutoff frequency control, we'll start to darken the tone produced by our oscillator. A low pass filter subtracts upper harmonics from the wave, allowing only lower harmonics to pass through. The resonance control creates a peak centered around the cutoff frequency. This peak helps to emphasize the change as the filter is swept up and down. Changing the filter's frequency is primarily what gives our sound movement and brings it to life, which leads us to our next module. Envelopes are typically used to create change in the sound each time a note is played. Let's use the pip slopes control voltage output to sweep the cutoff frequency. First, we need to tell the envelope when to fire. To do so, let's connect the gate output from our MIDI to CV converter to the trig input of the envelope. When we press a key, we can see that the envelope produces a voltage. Let's patch the output to the filter's cutoff frequency CV input. If we turn up the small black attenuverter knob, we'll increase the amount of modulation to the cutoff. The pip slope includes attack and decay controls for shaping the envelope. Decay sets the time it takes for the envelope to trail off. Attack does the opposite set in the time it takes for the envelope to reach its peak voltage. Combined, these simple controls provide full shaping of the sound's transient. If we repatch the keyboard to the gate input instead of the trigger input, the envelope will respond to gate time or the length of a key press. This sustain phase occurs between the attack and decay stages, lasting as long as the key is held. Let's return to the trigger input. Remember, this input ignores the gate time. The envelope is added to the main cutoff frequency setting. In other words, it raises the frequency only beyond the setting of the main control. Let's increase the range of the envelope by turning up the attenuverter. This allows us to set a lower initial cutoff frequency but still reach a similar brightness by the envelope. 
Although we have created a fairly finished sounding bass line, take note that our sound continues endlessly, even after the envelope is trailed off, which leads us to the final module in our chain. Simply put, the VCA, or Voltage Controlled Amplifier, is a volume control that can be controlled by CV. Let's repatch the output of the filter into a VCA of the Tangle Quartet, taking it direct out to our mixer. As we turn up the level control, we'll start to let the sound through. It sounds exactly the same as before. Now let's repatch our envelope to control the level instead of the cutoff. Notice our sound now trails off to silence after a key has been pressed. The envelope is controlling the level with the same CV that was previously controlling the cutoff. Instead of modulating the sound's timbre, however, we are now modulating its amplitude. Of course, we have now lost our filter modulation due to repatching. Let's bring it back. This time using a Molt to duplicate the envelope's output to both modules. We'll patch the CV out to any jack on the Molt, then connect one copy to the cutoff frequency CV input, and the other copy to the VCA level CV input. Adjusting the cutoff settings, we can hear that the modulation has returned to the filter. But this time, the amplitude also trails off to silence. We have now built a fully functional bass voice. Let's program a sequence on the keyboard and explore the adjustments that can be made to our bass sound. We'll add in a kick drum from the Taiso Daiko as a basic beat. Subtle changes to the envelope shape, amount of filter modulation, and the starting position of the cutoff control greatly impact the style of our bass line. Raising the attack and decay can loosen up the notes. When using a sequencer, manual adjustments are common, centering the performance element around timbral changes rather than playing the actual notes. For a warm, punchy bass sound, we can lower the cutoff modulation and shorten the decay. Creating a bass line like this is a great starting place to either build into a full track or to further modify. In part two of this video, we'll take a look at some additions we can make to this simple patch to give it a bit more identity and make it your own.